You are now tuned in to the Project 365 Experience. So, like, you obviously you assess players when they come in. Um, you help them kind of get back. But then your your um your specialty, I would say, is speed. So I'm gonna start with the obvious question. Can anybody become faster? Yeah, I mean, I think anybody can become faster. Like, mm -hmm. anybody who tells you that you can't improve speed is a liar, and yeah. you shouldn't. You just shouldn't trust that person's uh, intuition. Just because speed is a quality that can continue to be improved over time, it it's not one of those things where you know you just want you just yeah you have it or you don't. There are some people that do like, you know, there are some people that are naturally gifted. I, I can speak for myself. I was one of those kids that athletically, I never touched the weight room until I was in college. So I'm speaking mm -hmm. from experience here, you know, but I was always naturally a very quick, fast twitch individual that could, you know, I was able, I'm five, nine. I was able to dunk a basketball by the time I was in eighth grade, but like, you know, I was very fast and I could jump really high. I can't really speak on terms of like what really fostered that. Mm -hmm. it like I just it just naturally had it there's some people that are like me that just naturally got it and then there's people that naturally don't but that doesn't mean we can't improve on those qualities um I actually like we it's funny because it, it this actually is a good time to like kind of bring up a story about a kid that we just we've been working with for the past six seven years um when I tell you this kid was probably the most unathletic person that has yeah. ever walked through our doors you looked at him the first day that he walked in as like a 12 year old, like 11, 12 year old could have never thought that kid was going to be a division one player like ever. Like he was super slow, super uncoordinated, was really weak, lanky, just like he had the goggles on everything. Like yeah. never thought he was going to be a division one baseball player. Literally six, seven years later of working with us, he just, officially signed his letter of intent or got his official offer and accepted an offer to go play at Stony Brook for baseball. Hey, nice. Like, and we completely transformed his athleticism. Like kid was literally the slowest, probably one of the weakest kids that ever got into this, into the weight room. You know, we set mm -hmm. him up on a full nutrition plan. Like he's been doing nutrition with me for several years, doing strength and strength and conditioning and speed programming with us for the past six, seven years. Kids, a division one baseball player now. Like, and that's just from hard work for seven years. And everybody literally, Insane. Looked at this, everybody looked at this kid and was like, this kid is never going to be a division one baseball player. Literally just signed a sign to go play for Stony Brook in 2024. I like, love it. Program, very <laughs> well-respected division one program. And I, lo it's like I love that, that. Stories like that just go to show that like, it's very much possible. Like, that, like you can defy your genetics. You can defy your genetics. It just takes a little bit longer for some people and you got to start early. Like I, yeah. I tell all the time, like don't wait till you're a senior in high school to try to transform your body. Cause that, that you're, you're kind of like, it's like starting a race three yards back, like three, right. three to 10 yards back from the starting point. That that's like, that's, you're going to, you're never going to win when you're behind the eight ball. So yes. it's like thing. So let's, yeah, so let's talk about it. Like, what, what do you think would be like the 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 key components of like a, uh, increasing speed or like that people would have in their plan? What are important factors that let's say a kid who doesn't have access to a strength and conditioning coach wants to increase his speed? What are the key components that they would have to lock in on? Yeah, when it comes to increasing speed, I try to break this down as simple as I possibly can. I love it. You know, there's a there's a there's a speed. That. Um, so obviously I like to, I'm going to get very nerdy, very, very, uh, physics, like for, for a second. And then I'll explain what everything is, um, mm -hmm. you know, force, you know, overall force at impact times rate of force. So how you can apply that force into the ground mm -hmm. plus the mechanics. So what does that mean? Force. We need to improve our ability to produce force into the ground. This is essential when it comes to acceleration because it's defined by longer ground contacts tons of force into the ground from a static position so in theory a stronger athlete can produce more force into the ground so getting strong 
one to five reps working 85% or more of their one rep max. If you can get stronger within that point, you're going to produce more force into the ground. Rate of force development, that's your power, your ability to display force quickly. That's the best representation of our velocity-based movements. So moving your body fast with plyometrics, jumps, sprints, that's going to be, that's going to be something that's really important. And in mechanics, if we can improve your mechanics, we can limit energy leaks in how well you can move. So my, my major key components for increasing speed, sprint at full speed, 10 yard max sprints, allow for full recovery between those sprints. So think if you're going 10 yards, six seconds per yard, that's a minute rest. I'd say sprint two to three times per week. Don't overdo it. Focus on one to two mechanical things at most. Don't like kind of bog the athlete down, but try to improve your mechanics. Uh, if you do have the ability to use loaded sprints that allow for only a 15% uh, decrease of your max speed. So loaded sprints, they help with mechanics and force application into the ground. Um, if you don't have access to those things, sprinting up a hill, it's the same, same kind of stimulus. Get a little bit of an incline on a hill and run as fast as you can up that hill. That's the same stimulus as doing a loaded sprint. Um, and those are free. Hills are everywhere. You can find those um, positional isometrics. So working on stance and position and force projection, you know, getting up on against the wall, something that's an immovable object, getting into a sprint position with good angles and posture and pushing into that wall as hard as you can. You're getting the force application into the ground and force projection, but also working on stance and position. Um, I mentioned it before, but increasing absolute strength, getting getting stronger is going to be able to help you improve right away, especially if you're. Uh, early on as a young athlete. Um, I also say if you have the ability and you have the sled, like a like a heavy sled, you know, heavy sled drags and heavy sled pushes, they're very, um, it's a more specific type of strength exercise that helps you improve speed. Um, and then next, super, super simple, super easy, improving your foot and ankle um, strength, you know, training limb stiffness, just the ability to, you know, create those springy like quality in your lower legs. Like that's going to be very key right away for improving speed. Um, moving lighter and heavier weights fast. You know, we can't just lift heavy mm -hmm. weights. We got we to gotta lift heavy things and lighter things fast to improve that rate of force development, your power. Um, so those are going to be very important as well. And I always tell people jump as high as you can two times per week. Some of those jumps can be short and fast. The other ones could be longer and more full jumps. Um, and then actually just, you know, not just that, not just shorter distance sprints or heavier loaded shorter distance sprints, but sprinting at longer distance. Because obviously top speed is also another thing that we have. There's two main qualities. There's acceleration and top speed. So acceleration is going to be those shorter distance sprints while top, like your top speed is going to be longer distance. I'm talking like 30, 40, even 50 yards, just getting exposure to top speeds. Mm -hmm. um, because that quality is also something that may not be something that's huge in basketball, but it, there's research from guys like Ken Clark, a PhD guy in, uh, in speed, uh, one of the best speed coaches in the world. Um, you know, he did research with NFL combine athletes saying that if you mm -hmm. can incre increase your top speed exposures and incre increase your top speed, it can help with the acceleration profile. So if you're somebody that's trying to get faster, that's another thing you want to look for. And then I say all the time, the last thing here, time yourself and gauge improvements, you know, start one week, your first week, time yourself, see how fast you go in a couple of weeks of doing all the things that I mentioned above, go back and time yourself again and see if you improve, you know, the only way that you're actually going to be right. able to see if you got improvement is actually just, you know, improving overall and just kind of gauging whether or not you're seeing any improvement. I'm very, I'm very intrigued by speed because like, if you look at if you look at, and those are all good points, that's what you were saying. Um, if you look at, you, it was always this one thing that I was like, okay, can people actually get really good at this? Because if you look at teams like um, the Kansas City Chiefs in the NFL when they had Tyreek Hill, yep. um, if you look at um, the Memphis Grizzlies with John Morant and all that kind of stuff, you're looking at speed, like that's the reason why they're so good, you know? And I always thought that speed was one of those things that was very under... So. What is basketball speed? Basketball speed, speed is, well, speed in general is massively important for athletes. You know, getting mm -hmm. faster gives you more options during the season. Speed in mm -hmm. itself opens up angles. It opens up gaps, spacing, 
And it just puts fear in your opponent's hearts. You know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. sports are played at submaximal intensities of speed. So if you can essentially raise the level in which your maximal outputs are, it will, in theory, raise those operational outputs in your game. So now mm. those maximal outputs that you're that you're producing in game are now going to be further raised from where they were a season ago. So getting faster in general is just being able to not just, you know, close those gaps, get get to those spots on the on the court faster, blowing by opponents very easily, but also defensively, you know, being able to guard your position is crucial. And obviously, if you're going up against faster guards defensively, if you can move laterally uh, and in multiple directions quicker, you know, chances are you're going to close space, close gaps. You know, you're going to be able to get to spots and beat people to spots if you're faster. In, in my definition of basketball related speed, being able to open up gaps, you know, free up positions, get into different angles that you otherwise couldn't get into, and just being able to also guard your position and guard other positions, because especially like if we're talking bigs, like, you know, I'm, I referred to the fact that I'm working with a six, seven guy, six, six guy, you know, if I can get him faster defensively, he now becomes more of a defensive threat on, on the court, because now he doesn't have to just worry about guarding bigs that are a little slower. He can guard guards right and now right. He's more of a threat. So, you know, that's something that, you know, getting basketball speed or, or just getting, faster in general, those are the opportunities it allows you to get in season. 